this was a commission of inquiry for Biju Patnai. This was again, uh, you know, my sister, him and my mother went off to Bhubaneswar. And, you know, obviously it was a politically surcharged environment. And they, I, I think they, they virtually uh, cut themselves off from all society matters and were just hearing the case so that they could not be influenced. And uh, again, uh, I think he gave that particular report on this. Uh, it was a report where uh, he said, yes, there have been issues of corruption, but he also recognized the fact that Bichu Patnaik had done a lot for the state. And uh, the report uh, you know, admired Bichu Patnaik for whatever he had done for the state. It came in for some criticism. I remember statesmen came out with a very scathing article saying, listen, it was not his job to say what, what good work has he done. What was rather important was what were the issues of corruption. But my father always did have an admiration for people who were achievers. And uh, I recollect that when he was a district session judge, the first time around his name was recommended for being a high court judge. It was turned on by Pratap Singh Kero because he felt he was far too independent. But somehow the, the second time it was recommended, he could not turn it around. But surprisingly, they could, 10 years later, when you know when he became a high court judge, Pratap Singh Kero recognized that he was an independent judge. And whenever he would meet him anywhere, he would always call him and speak to him with a great degree of warmth, saying, look, here's an independent judge who stood up to whatever pressures we put on to him. And again, in, uh, you know, my father had get admiration for whatever Pratap Singh Kero did in improving the you know, overall levels of development in uh, Punjab. So th th these were uh, some of the things that he did uh, professionally. Otherwise, he was attached very much to his own family. He was very close to his brothers and sisters. Uh, our, you know, we would spend almost two months every year in Dalhousie, where he would write, go for his long walks, and uh, you know, uh, uh, take to relax and so on and so forth. And so, therefore, that, that was one thing that he looked forward to, his uh, holidays in Dalhousie. And uh, so, therefore, this, this I think briefly covers as far as professional life, as long as he was working. He was obviously, he was an ambitious man. He, been, he gave uh, the judgment on in, I, I the Keshwana Bharti and Habeas Corpus case. He, he knew that he was no longer going to be the Chief Justice of India. For a man who had come from a small town, that was the ultimate. But I think he was... He knew that he will not be made the Chief Justice of India. He mentioned to his sister, look, I've given a judgment which will make sure that I do not become, but he held on to his views. So that, that, that I think, briefly covers what, what he did till that point of time. He was fortunate after that, that two years later, one year later, the emergency was lifted and, you know, whatever contribution he had was recognized in his lifetime. Mind you, you know, Contrary to the popular opinion, uh, you know, contrary to the normal view that emergency was very unpopular, it's not necessarily true. There were a lot of people who were reasonably well educated at that point of time who thought emergency was a great thing happening in India. And therefore, it, it was something which is not a very popular thing to say, listen, you know, to stand up to Mrs. Indira Gandhi at that point of time. It's only in the last stages he had of the emergency she became unpopular. So anyway, he was fortunate, and therefore, after he came, uh, you know, he retired, and the, you know, the new Janta government came into power. They wanted him to hold the commission of inquiry for against Indra Gandhi, which he refused. He says it's not fair because you know uh, people will think that look, I'm gunning for her. She's superseded me, and all that sort of a thing. So therefore, I think he became the chairman of the law commission. He also was offered. Uh, to become the law minister, and uh, which uh, after a lot of struggles he, he did become for one day, and then he resigned the very next day, saying this is not my cup of tea, and that 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 was it. Uh, uh, he also, you know, I, I still recollect that uh, one day late at night uh, we we were driving by in Madras, and the Chola Hotel had uh, this big thing where they would display the latest news. And we realized that he'd be nominated to become the, uh, he was the nominated with the opposition parties to become the joint candidate for presidentship of the country. Uh, he, that, that was his eight days or ten days of, what shall I say, political avatar. Other than that, uh, you know, uh, 
he was a loving father hmm? by and large pragmatic hmm? uh, soft spoken hmm? uh, hard working but that, that these are these qualities he would always there was one more thing one quality he had was that always if there was a dispute between a powerful and a weaker person he would always uh, you know side with the weaker person and when i when i say there's a side for a weaker person it could be you know, let's say if, if there's a popular opinion which said listen such as such person how rich and wealthy has done something wrong and you know when nobody will be willing to support him he will be always there to say listen you know that that fellow has a good case and so on and so forth you know i i i remember uh, for example in case of the union carbide case you always used to feel that look what the supreme court has done is a fair thing it was a pragmatic view you cannot keep these things endlessly and uh, you know these these were these were not very popular opinions at that point of time you also you know there was another case where uh, you also felt that you know uh, whenever the you know, the masses were haunting somebody with a small or weak you know, he he would always be with the side with the the fellow who was who, who had done the wrong thing so you know, th- th- that was something which, which was there if you know my mother had had some problem with the servant the servant was always right and the mother was always wrong huh? so that 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 was something which was built built into him always uh, rooting for an unpopular uh, person that that was something one popular cause that that was another quality i i weak like it was sometimes embarrassing <laughs> let's say there was a dispute between hindustan and india and pakistan and he would say no no look pakistan has a case in this particular matter and therefore you know we would say listen how can you be not siding with your own country but that that was the way he was so i i think that was it uh, he was you know he he was a prolific speaker he would you know write very often write with you know publishes articles on various issues um, on persons or anything else so in that sense he, this was there last uh, 10 years or so he became extremely fond of poetry and they were uh, you know continuously he would read a lot of uh, poetry both in english and urdu poetry until the age of what 92 93 he could recite whole verses of shakespeare absolutely you know which none of us could do he was amazing in that sense though well. very fond of poetry would read poetry a lot that they those became his constant companions the citing briefly covers it so from whatever you've said it seems like he's a very he was a very balanced person <laughs> what was what was what were his weaknesses what were, were they the fam- was it the family was it um the grandchildren something something that you know would just melt him no he was obviously fond of his children you know he he was the my daughter was with him in delhi for 2 3 years and she would go to office and let's say she was staying with him and my you know my brothers were also staying with him but she was staying with him and let's say she would come at 7:30 in the evening by 6 o'clock in the evening he would be waiting outside waiting for her to come up if she came late he would be very worried so you know these were he was, he was fond of uh, his children their children he was doing all that sort of thing yes uh, he, I, I, this is something which is very true from 6 o'clock onwards he would be sitting in the veranda waiting for her to come so the, yeah like that was it otherwise he was you know as long as people did not have work with him or people could not influence him he was okay but if he he felt that somebody had a recommendation or something like that Thank he would simply cut him off i i i i know of a particular occasion when my, my mother told me that uh, he was in bombay and uh, he met uh, hirubai man and she said they were really doing very very well and hirubai man he told him how he had grown up and how he had done this and he asked him how do you do that uh, how do you bribe people and he said look i had to bribe from four annas to various people and then hirubai mani had uh, in the matter of conversation said sir if you have anything at any point of time that you want me to contribute to i would be more than happy to contribute to it and uh, my mother said from that moment on my father did not open his mouth at all 
So you know, these were uh, this thing. He was extremely fond of his sisters, who would adore their brother. So they were a large family. So that that was, I think, his uh, basic strength. As long as you did not come to me for come to me for influencing me, my judgment, or did not ask me to recommend your case to anybody, you were okay. But uh, none of us could ever ask him to do something for us. No.